traders, I'm excited to share my top swing ideas for the week ahead. Now, these ideas are going to be a little bit different to last week ideas, to the ideas in previous weeks. And the reason why is because there was definitely a shift that occurred in the market on Friday. And in the short term, I believe that it's definitely time to adjust again in the short term. So let's get straight into it as I share my actionable trade plans, ideas, risk management, trade management, and targets with you for my top swing ideas for the week ahead. Starting off with a lower high continuation short in the semis. So let's take a look at SOXL. Now, you know, on Friday, as I mentioned, a significant shift occurred in the sector in semis across many high flying names, be it NVIDIA with a major engulfing candle and significant selling, AMD, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSM, another one. And uh, even, you know, the overall ETF, of course, SMH. Um, so, you know, I think definitely in the, in the short term, the top opportunity for me will be looking for a lower high for continuation short. Now, look, it's a notable shift in the sector, uh, in the overall market. Um, it definitely presents a change of character with such a move, with breaking this uptrend after we extended greatly from moving averages, and now we've got an engulfing candle to the downside. Um, and as such, it presents an exciting opportunity for the week ahead. Um, so, you know, to expand on that with the entire sector experiencing some selling on Friday, um, you know, this is a, a trade and idea that you can express in many, many ways. Um, for me, I'm going to focus on SOXL. That's just my vehicle of choice. Also keeping an eye on the video, of course, as the leader of the sector and this whole move. Um, so let's get straight into my exact plan for SOXL. So again, this thought process can, can really be transferred to a host of other names. Um, some charts that we already looked at, TSM, AMD, uh, NVIDIA, SMH, SOXL, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, but given the almost 12% decline in SOXL on Friday, I must say that I'm definitely not going to be looking to chase this short uh, on the open if we open with weakness or a significant washdown. In fact, if we did have to gap down significantly low on Monday and get a washout off the open, I would turn my attention to looking for a relief bounce, uh, you know, to the long side. But the main idea here is going to be looking for push higher into levels from Friday, um, ideally the two-day VWAP, and to get a short for a continuation move lower. So what will that actually look like? So let's put on volume weighted average price. So ideally, after we've got such an extension lower to the downside, um, we have the two-day view of which is going to form around 52-ish mark on Monday. Um, I'm definitely looking for a push into that area. So specifically, I'm targeting a move for risk reward purposes anywhere kind of in this region around 50, um, very wide zone looking for around 52 zone to this 50 area. I'd love to see SOXL get a little bit of a relief bounce in the morning up to 50, get within this range where I think we could get some supply and we could form a lower high um, because anyone that looked to buy this for a dip on Friday, they're essentially underwater. Um, it's a notable change, a shift of character, shift in momentum. So I do expect that if we get a push into 50, 51, 52 within this zone, we could get a lower high forming, which is caused obviously shorts getting in, that supply, and then obviously people that bought it on Friday underwater getting out for break even, causing that lower high, seeing some supply come in and potentially getting a move lower. Now for this position, I'm just going to be looking to get a pop into 50, 52, into this potential supply zone um, once we get a confirmation intraday throughout the week of that lower high that's been formed. I'm trading this on a five-minute time frame, and once we get that confirmation, I'm going to be looking to get short with the stop placed above the high of day, the high of that move, um, and thereafter, I'm going to be looking to take around half of my position into this 48 area, so into Friday's low. And thereafter, I'm going to be trailing my stop on a five-minute time frame, so lower highs on a five-minute time frame, so fairly conservatively there. I'm looking for a one to one and a half, two-day move, and I'm ultimately going to be looking for a move into around 45. So I'm ultimately looking for a move back down to this pivot area, and that would be my final target for a nice measured pullback in the sector, and specifically in SOXL. That would take us right down as well, not only to a 
potential area of support, but it'll also take us down to where this move really began to get extended from. So looking really for an engulfing move to wipe out this extension. Um, and so that is going to be the plan in XOXL. It's going to be the primary focus, um, SOXL and many of the other uh, semi names. That's where I'm going to be focusing a lot of my attention on this week. But, you know, there is another short idea that I'm going to throw in here. It's on my radar simply for the concept of also overwhelming supply. Um, so that is going to be PBM. And similar to SOXL, it's lower, high to short. Now, typically, I avoid such a low float small cap stocks on the short side. Um, but because the volume here tells the story and it offers a very interesting opportunity, should it conform to my plan, um, I'll definitely have some alerts set and look to react if we reach certain prices. Um, so what I really like about this, if we also go to a five minute time frame here, what I like here is that it traded close to 150 million shares on Friday. Um, and it obviously closed, low tick, low of day. So basically what does that tell me? It tells me that everyone who bought the stock on Friday also represented by where volume weighted average prices and where we close. Everyone who bought this on Friday is underwater, and there was a lot of volume traded. Um, so if the stock can push higher on Monday, ideally into this, you know, 280 to 3 to 320, what will become the two-day VWAP, if we can push into that zone, um, I do suspect we could see a failure because so many people are trapped on the long side now. Um, shorts are very comfortable, likely took their exit. Um, and so we should see overwhelming supply come in within that region. Um, and therefore, I'm looking for a move into this kind of target zone here, let's say, you know, between three, where the two-day VWAP is, maybe even 280 conservatively within this zone to be met with some um, supply, overwhelming supply, causing a lower high, giving me confirmation. Thereafter, I'd look to get short against that lower high once confirmation um, is there, um, given by price action. Um, and then I'm going to be looking for just a one-day swing trade coming back into Friday's low, into the low twos, um, and also intraday um, trailing my stop using the five-minute time frame lower highs. Um, and separately, also definitely wouldn't want to see the stock reclaim its intraday view up and begin to base. Um, and so those are my two ideas for the week. PBM, secondary idea, back burner focus, just some alerts said. Main idea is definitely SOXL along with all of the other vehicles one can choose to trade within the semi-industry uh, and sector. Um, and so that's what I'm focusing on. Let me know what you're focusing on. Um, let me know if there are any um, really nice risk reward technical setups that you have in your radar for potential breakouts or even breakdowns. Um, I would love to hear. And good luck for the week. It should be a good week, an exciting week. And I'll see you all next week. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve. And you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition, the traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and getting access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria 
that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.